Well, hello again. What I'd like to talk to you about today is really how do we find the feminine equivalent of a circuit that really only has a dependent source. Now, we've looked at circuits with independent sources. We've looked at circuits with dependent and independent sources in them. So let's see if we can have a look here. Supposing here is my dependent source. We're going to say it's a voltage source. We'll give it a value of 2 times a current I. And we've got a resistor sitting over here. We're going to say it's a 4 ohm resistor. We've got another resistor sitting over here. We'll say that's a 6 ohm resistor. And that is basically the circuit that I'm dealing with. Um, I'm going to call these terminals A. And this is, of course, terminal B sitting over here. And the current I is defined here in this direction. OK? So the question is, how do I come up with the feminine equivalent of this? Well, let's think about this a little bit. The open circuit voltage, V open circuit, uh, which of course is really equal to what? That feminine voltage. What is that? Well, you know, there's no current in this circuit. And so really this open circuit voltage, which is the voltage across this guy here, since this current, this current is what? Is zero here, because this is open. Um, the voltage here must be what? It must be equal to zero. And so I'll make a comment since the I is equal to zero. Okay? All right. Hmm. What about the feminine resistance? Well, in the past, when we had independent and dependent sources, we said the feminine resistance was equal to what? It was equal to the open circuit voltage divided by the short circuit current. Well, we really cannot use this, so I'm going to say we cannot use this relation to find the Thevenin resistance. We cannot use it, okay? So we've got to think of another way that we can actually deal with this particular problem. Look, it's a little bit tricky, but what we're going to do is we're going to actually take a source, and in this case I'm going to take a current source, and I'm going to apply it to this circuit here, okay? I'm going to choose a value, a simple value here. I'm going to say that's a one amp current source, okay? What I'm going to do then is I'm going to apply this source to this circuit, and really what I want to try to find is the voltage really at these terminals here, which we could call Vx. So that's between here and here, and that is going to be Vx, all right? So... If I can find Vx, right, then I can actually find R Thevenin by saying that that is really that Vx divided by how much current I can actually push in, which is really equal to that one amp, okay? All right, so how do we deal with this problem now? So think about this as the problem that we've got to uh, solve. Well, um, I could find, really, or define a mesh current. I could call this mesh I1, and I could call this a mesh current, what, I2, couldn't I? And I could write some things down. For example, I could say, look, let's look at the I1 mesh, okay? So we're going to go round in that direction, in a clockwise direction, and what are we doing with mesh? We're just summing voltages, so let's do that. So as we go from a minus to a plus, I'm going to call that what? 2i, that's a voltage. Then because I'm going in the direction of the i1 mesh, that establishes a voltage plus minus. So it's a drop, isn't it? So that's a minus, what? 4 times that i1. And then I've got the voltage drop across this guy, which is a minus. Open up a bracket here. That would be i1, the lead current, minus the i2. And that is what? Multiplied by 6. And all of that really is equal to 0, isn't it? Now, let's think about this just a little bit here. Could we not say that I2, this is the I2, isn't it? Or what we're defining as I2, isn't it? Here. I2 is really in the mesh direction is like this, which is in the same direction, isn't it? 
as I. So can I not say that I too really is this current I that's associated really with this voltage source here? This is a current dependent voltage source, right? Okay. And can I not also say that really this I2 is equal to what? Well, notice this current, this one amp current is going in the opposite direction to this I2. And so can I not say that the I2 is really equal to a minus one, isn't it? Yep. All right, so can I now start putting some of this information into really this equation here? Can I not do that? And I can say, well, yeah, I can. I can put this, um, since I2 is I, and since I2 is a minus one, I can put that in there, can't I? Which gives me what? A minus two, doesn't it? Then I've got my minus four, haven't I? I1, yep, I've got that. Expanding this bracket over here, that's a minus what? Six I1 sitting there. And then a minus times a minus gives me a plus, that is what? Plus six I2, and really all of that is equal to zero. Well, yeah, now I put the I2 in here, since we know it's a minus one. And so what do I have? Let's uh, take this a step at a time. So that's a minus two, minus a four I1, minus what? A six I1, minus a six, and all of that is equal to zero, isn't it? Yep. So can I collect my terms together? I've got a minus two here, and I've got a minus six here. I can take that to the other side, right? And that is eight, isn't it? And that's equal to, I've got a minus four and a minus six, so that's really a minus 10 I1, isn't it? And so I could say then that I1 is simply equal to what? It's equal to a minus eight divided by 10, which of course is equal to a minus 0 0.8 amps. Having found I1 and I2, we want to now find this voltage Vx. So what is this voltage Vx? Well, let's think about that. We can use this same approach, can't we? We know I1 minus I2 times 6 would be equal to Vx. So I'll put a bracket there. I1 minus I2 multiplied by 6 is equal to that Vx. So therefore, Vx is equal to what? I1 is what? It's this term right here. So that's a minus 0 0.8. Okay. And then we have what? Minus I2. But I2 was a minus 1, wasn't it? So that's a minus times a minus, which gives me what? A plus 1. And that's multiplied by 6. And so if we evaluate this, this comes out to be 1.2 volts. Okay, what about the Thevenin resistance then? Well, our Thevenin is really equal to, well, it is going to be what? It's going to be this voltage which we've just found, which is 1.2, and that's divided by the amount of current we're pushing in, which is this 1 amp. And so that is equal to 1.2 ohms, and that's the Thevenin equivalent, okay? So what we're really saying then is that if we go back to our original circuit, remember this was terminals A and B over here. So let's just quickly draw that. So we've got our equivalent circuit that we're going to come up with in just a moment. This is the original. So this is 2I. Uh, that's the 4 ohm resistor sitting there. That's my 6 ohm. Okay. There are my terminals A and B. And that was the I. So this is our voltage source here, dependent voltage source, which is dependent upon that current. The equivalent, the Thevenin equivalent of this, as far as these two terminals are concerned, is really just a single resistor. That's A and B of a value of 1.2 ohms. So this is equivalent to this. Okay, I'd like you to have a look at this problem here, okay? And I'd like you to see if you can find that voltage, which I'm calling V. So this is the circuit that we've got to deal with, okay? Now, I'd like you to do it two ways. A, I'd like you to basically treat the circuit as it is, 
and solve for v. Okay, so no simplification here. You're just going to solve for v. Uh, perhaps you're going to use mesh analysis. Okay, and you're going to solve for v. Okay, then. Having done that, what I'd like you to do is replace this guy here, as far as terminals A and B are concerned. So you take off the load, you take this off, and you replace it with the feminine equivalent. So then I'd like you to use the feminine equivalent circuit to find V. All right, have a go at this, and um, when you're ready, come on back and uh, we'll work this problem together.